So hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today we have Tatsu from the dev team behind Sanctuary Shattered Sun. He's going to be uh, talking to us today a little bit about the game and a little bit about the development and everything else that's going on with it. Tatsu, do you want to tell us who you are and what you do on the team? Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Tatsu. I'm uh, the co-founder of uh, Inhard Media and Sanctuary Shattered Sun. Uh, what I do on the team is a bit of a managerial role. I um, manage the team. I uh, find uh, new people to join the team. Uh, I take care of, uh, of uh, financing uh, the project. Uh, I, I try to find uh, investors and other source of revenue. Um, I uh, handle most of the, the socials, although I have people now who help me out with that. Um, I take care of, um, of uh, well, uh, accounting, uh, doing the paperwork for uh, the, the employment and, and NDAs and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, a lot of uh, bureaucratic and, and secretarial work, I guess. Uh, and I take care of uh, the websites, a um, whole, whole horde of, uh, of things that uh, aren't your you know, the, the first thing that you think of when you think about game developments. Uh, basically, uh, I take that off, uh, all those uh, extra tasks off of the, the, the rest of the team. And, uh, and yeah, I, I kinda, I'm kind of the glue that holds it all together in terms of, uh, of uh, manpower. <laughs> so, yeah. I think it's easy to forget that there needs to be people like that in a development team and in the business because a lot of people sort of think about development teams as all oh, as a designer, somebody who does the graphics, somebody who does the UI, but obviously, as you say, there's someone who needs to manage everything else around that as well. So I'm really pleased to have you with us today. So can you tell me how Sanctuary actually came about? Because obviously you didn't make or you've been involved in projects before, but obviously this is brand new between you and Nines, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is, uh, this is indeed a, a, a new, uh, really new undertaking for, for both someone like me and Nine. Um, I, I hadn't, you know, ever done game development before. Um, uh, I, I guess you could say I was a bit of a nobody before this project. Uh, I, you know, I had uh, done small mods, really nothing to write home about, uh, on both, you know, Supreme Commander, Planetary Annihilation, and uh, some small scripts, stuff like that. Um, tutorials, guides on on how to install on Linux, stuff, stuff uh, that are, that's not really um, anything impressive dev wise. Uh, and, uh, yeah, how this project came about, well, one day I just, um, I, I up and decided that I wanted to, uh, take a, a shot at game dev, uh, um, try it once and for all before maybe that kind of window of opportunity closes for me and I'm, I'm too old and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, d uh, you know, uh, fed up with, uh, with, every, with it all to, to even give it a shot anymore. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I just started out, um, uh, on, on a small open source personal project, seeing if I, if I could, you know, um, gather some steam with this and, uh, and, uh, it did gather some steam and it did gather some interest and, you know, uh, at the point where it started to have multiple people interested in it, I, I, I rebooted it as uh, not an open source project, but as a closed source and, and for-profit project. Uh, and uh, um, Nine uh, um, joined up, team to, uh, teamed up forces with me, and uh, we, we split the venture 50-50. Um, and, and then, you know, we started to have more and more people on the team that, uh, uh, that, that were, you know, more and more uh, talented and, and bringing more to the table. And, uh, and then the, the project scope increased um yeah this is uh, this is a story dating back all the way from from 2020 um mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's uh it's almost a three-year-old three-year-old project now uh and it's it's quite the road we've had uh and we've uh, uh we've uh, increased the scope of the project many times over the course of this uh, of this road so yeah um i think that that kind of um signals that that there was uh some some frank success uh, in uh in the in what we were doing and in the reception of it all so yeah uh, it's um 
uh, I guess it's an, a bit of an atypical um, story. You can't expect that from from most projects. Uh, of course, um, we we have the benefit of uh, of appealing to an already existing community of people of gamers, and um, that wouldn't be you know the case for for any given uh, project you you try like this. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's been it's been an interesting journey. It's nice to hear the whole background to it, to be honest, because even I wasn't aware of everything that you mentioned. There. I didn't realize it sort of started as an open source and then moved into this project. So yeah. thank you. I mean, like uh, like I said, uh, uh, at a certain point, I rebooted the project. Like the, yeah. the you know, open source project uh, didn't even have a name. It definitely wasn't Sanctuary, right? No, um, no. Yeah, and, and we took, uh, uh, you know, we took a long time before uh, we we settled on the name Sanctuary. I think that that only happened in in like uh, late twenty twenty one, or or was it or was it uh, already in in or maybe it was early twenty twenty one. We you know uh, we took some time to to determine things like uh, the the lore and stuff like that. But all in, all, all during all of that time, we were you know. Uh, steadfast on the on the code and, and stuff like that we we were uh unrelenting and hard at work uh <laughs> on that on those aspects yeah but uh but yeah it's it's uh, it's a project that um has taken many shapes and forms over over the course of its lifetime and uh it's kind of like uh morphed from uh from yeah the small uh one to two person team uh, yeah. or into the, a project that's like a four-man job and into a project that's more of a 10-person job and now kind of a 20-person job. Um, so, yeah, it's that's why I was talking about scope is that, you know, uh, you know there, there's only a real requirement for these number of people depending on what kind of scope you're, you're targeting, right? And our scope yeah. has evolved uh, in the course of the, the life of this project, yeah. And obviously you, you mentioned a little bit there, but where did the story and the concept actually come from then? That sort of came a little bit later than the start of the project, the actual sort of sanctuary, and I assume then the, the whole idea of the Dyson Sphere and things. Yeah. Well, credit where credit's due there. Um, that's actually an idea from uh, Special Bread, who's uh, the artist behind the EDA faction uh, on, uh, on the, the Sanctuary project. Um, yeah, so um, at the time we were like each uh, kind of pitching different ideas. We were trying to do like, okay, everybody does a write up and, and let's, you know, com uh, compare and, and see what we like about each other's idea. Maybe we can combine different ideas and maybe there's one that really stands out. Um, and so, yeah, each one of us has had, a, or several of us had a, had a little write up, had ideas that we could do in terms of lore and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, um, uh, I had I had an idea that that was uh, uh, that was uh, quite you know uh, well received uh, initially among the team, and uh, we were thinking maybe we'd go with that. Um, and then and then yeah, Brad came along with it, with his idea of uh, okay, let's do it on the Dyson sphere and everything. And uh, he talked uh, to it about uh, about that with uh, with Avitus, the modeler for the uh, Chosen faction, mm -hmm. and they both fell fell in love with the idea and then pitched it to to me and Nine. And progressively, we 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 you know uh, relinquished and, and we're like, yeah, you know what, I do like that. <laughs> um, and but that that was like nowhere near the point where we came up with the name sanctuary though uh that that came later um and yeah at that point at that point it was just the the idea that it would just you know uh, happen on the dyson sphere we didn't have many yeah. um necessarily ideas about about the factions even though we'd already started doing the aesthetic for for each faction like the yeah. the eda faction you know uh even though it didn't have the name uh, at that point necessarily, it was already blocky and everything like that. And the chosen yeah. faction was already curvy and, and everything. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I think at that point we didn't have, uh, yeah, we didn't have Kubo on the team yet. Um, but, um, but we, we already were thinking about having a, a, another third faction that would be more uh, leaning towards a more jagged, a spiky aesthetic. Um, uh, and yeah, um, 
and then as as we thought about um, the, the lore a bit more, we started to to come up with this idea of okay, these there's the post humans that that's that's what the chosen are going to be. They're going to be yeah. ascended humans, and uh, and these this blocky factions that this this represents uh, a human faction, and they're the the coalescence, the alliance of the the remaining humans, and uh, and then the last one has to be AI, right? And we really wanted to have uh, one of the factions be be AI. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so bit by bit that, that started to, uh, uh, to really coalesce into, into a central and unified lore. And, um, and yeah, we started to get help, uh, from, uh, from writers, from people that, that, you know, had ideas. We, we reached out, we wanted to have uh, volunteers help us, help us write the lore. And so we had people uh, apply and we accepted them and we started uh, to, to collaborate with them on, on the lore. Uh, we call these people the lore lords, and now we have uh, uh, quite a few in the in this group, and um, and yeah, they've uh, they've really uh, helped us flesh out the universe. We you know from time to time do do meetings with them and try to uh, uh, push uh, all of the the narrative and everything forward and and uh, and uh, flesh it out even more. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, uh, so uh, with that we we. Uh, we turned it into what it is today, and we're pretty happy with the uh, the general idea of uh, of the setting and uh, and uh, of the factions and everything like that. And we're gonna we're gonna stick with that uh, and just uh, uh, try to uh, create everything like the the campaign and everything like that from from there. Good. I must admit, I'm I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing so far of both the factions and the story. It really knits in very well together. So, yeah. and I can, I can see how much you enjoy hearing that as well. You, yeah. you really do come across as someone who has a real passion for this project. Um, no, and, and just I the do. way you can sit there and you, you can reel off these answers without having to look at any reference material or anything, which is also, you know, it's a sign that you have, you've, you've got a lot of time invested in this project. You know, you know it inside out, which is, yeah. it's really nice to see from my point of view. And I'm sure some of the viewers will feel the same way. So Thank you. you've been working on the game for, you said, about three years now. And at what point of development would you say you're at now? Where, where have you reached, I suppose? Well, uh, what we've reached is uh, a stage that's um, probably what you'd call pre-demo. Um, there, there, there's like, um, you know, we, we have a really like all-encompassing approach to, uh, to our code and, and what we want to deliver. Uh, we we know like the the full feature list of, of kind of the end projects uh, ends and we know out of those what are features that can be just tacked on or what are features that are, are core to the to the code and you can't really um, you know add them on after the fact you have to have thought everything out and actually uh, uh, implemented everything yeah. with those uh, requirements in mind and and. Uh, and or even like actually implementing those those requirements, those features. Um, otherwise, it, 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 the the puzzle piece just won't fit, right? Um, yeah. And as as a result, uh, you know, as a consequence of that, there's um, you know, it feels like there there might not be much to to show for for three years of, of dev time. But it's not like uh, you know, a vertical slice of uh, of a user experience kind of development, right? Where we always have the the you know you boot up the the game and you and you start moving your character around or, or something like that as uh as the the basis you're going off of and then you add stuff you add you know yeah. bricks to the edifice no it's more a question of uh very very strong roots or um you know uh supports basements if, if you will to to the whole thing and and that's what we're building up so things like uh, uh the the full mapping suites things like the full modding suites um everything in regards to uh the 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 full uh multi-threading uh the the pathfinding um those are like the the real core blocks that we're that we're refining perfecting yeah. and uh, and working on right now um, and, you know, I'm happy to say that we, we do, uh, you know, uh, have a, a real good state uh, for, for these blocks, right? Um, the, 
the, the full mapping is is a feature that's that's already in. Uh, it can it can bear to have more you know uh, sub features to it, but yeah. essentially it's there. Um, full modding, same thing, right? It, it's it's essentially there. We you know that we can uh, we have more of those add onable features, sub features that we can add to it still. Um, but they're not necessarily a priority right now. At least the the, yeah. the full feature of modding is is functional in the way that we wanted with the language that we want, which is difficult considering we were using an off the shelf engine. So that wasn't uh, that wasn't a given. We had to you know write a whole translation yeah. layer for for that, but we did it and it works. Um, and uh, and yeah, things like uh, the pathfinding. Well, pathfinding is a little bit more uh, more of a of a demanding beast, right? Because we had we can have one that works, but um, can it be more optimized? Can it uh, uh, you know uh, use less network bandwidth? Can it um, be more uh, be more stable? Be more yeah. refined? All those things, yes. And then you know uh, we since it's such a, a core and important feature, uh, we do spend a lot of time uh, refactoring and improving that part of the, of the code. Um, so um, still still work to be done on that, but you know. You guys may have seen um, in January, uh, we did a, a, a gameplay demo with Guile, um, Guilecast on YouTube, um, and yeah, since then it, it you know the, the the game has progressed an immense amount. There's uh, many many more features. You know now we we have uh, better unit navigation, pathfinding, movements. Uh, there's tracks, there's wrecks, there's uh, animations for, uh, you know, uh, extra bones on the units, turrets, and, and things like that. Um, and uh, we have, um, uh, you know, more different uh, interactions, more, um, uh, well, you know, th there's a lot more uh, uh, features that have been added yeah. on top of that. So... Uh, what state is it in? Well, it's not in a state that you know I'd I'd be anywhere near comfortable uh, sharing with the the broad gaming community right now because well, um, you know it may not be uh, stable enough and and you know there's uh, there's not really uh, much by in 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 terms of uh, in terms of game content right in terms of hours of play yeah, or stuff like yeah. that. Um, but, uh, but the, the bases are there, they're solid and they, they are built to allow for a very, very long-term community around it. Um, and that was a very challenging thing to do, but you know, that was, uh, that was really a number one priority for yeah. us. So, um, yeah, we're, I guess we're a ways off from, from a demo and then, and then a beta. Um, uh, maybe those could, um, could come in 2023. Um, yep. I, I think that's uh, you know that's a uh, unreachable uh, uh, target for us. Um, I think like somewhere in early 2023 we'll we'll be able to to do a demo, and that's that's good because it'll be able to coincide with our Kickstarter, um, which is something I, I, I want to do. If we can if we can have a, a demo as part of our Kickstarter, then. That'll bring more people to it. Yeah. Um, that's a much better pitch. You know, it's like it's not like yeah. oh, we have an idea, we'll make it. You know, you know, you'll see. It's more like you know, here it is. Check it out. Um, yeah, like this is uh, you know, you, now it's uh, now it's like a, a much better sounding pitch, right? So so yeah, that's uh, I, in in a nutshell. That's that's where we are. Um, mm, I guess the, the the best way to, to get an idea about that is is our YouTube channel where we'll um, you know whenever there's a, there's a new state of the game and everything like that we'll we'll put a video and uh, it'll it'll give people a better idea. I'll make sure I pull a link to that down below and and to Guile's video as well for people to check out because uh, he did do that gameplay video with you. I remember seeing that. I think you linked me actually. Um, mm. But just obviously, you know, you've given us a load of detail about development there. So thank you very much. Because a lot of people don't understand development or the process. They just play the game. So it's it's nice to sort of get some information on that as well. Overall, from your experience of developing Sanctuary so far, are there any like big ideas you've had to let go that you wanted to have in the game originally and things like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, like one, one of the biggest things I wanted to do, and which you know, 
gives you probably a, a little bit of insight into my uh, <laughs> my ambition and, and how unre unrestrained sometimes it can be. Um, I wanted to have a uh, uh, simulation of, uh, of water fluids in, in, in uh, water dynamics. Uh, which you know is is a is a real big dream of mine. You know, maybe maybe yeah. Sanctuary Two or something. I don't know, or maybe <laughs> it'll it'll never be something that I I put out. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, I, I wanted to to have um, either a fully voxelized engine or or, or something like that that yeah. would allow for um, you you know say you've got a, a, a stormy. Uh, a stormy ocean right and you've got your your battleships on and your battleships are really like they're riding huge waves and then they're they're turning their turrets and, and shooting through <laughs> waves right and the the, yeah. the water splashes out of the way and everything and and goes through you know maybe one or two or multiple waves to to reach its target maybe it's slowed down by by the water and then you have you know a big artificial dam the dam breaks and the the, the water gushes in the ships get taken with it uh, uh you know it's it, it sounds great right but it's yeah it's yeah insane in terms of, <laughs> of, of how you implement that like uh the, from the moment you want to have multiplayer right it's like insane. Yeah. like how how do you transmit that kind of data uh through through the entire thing like it makes it mandatory for for the entire uh engine to be lockstep deterministic which is something that's kind of out of our league i mean like we do have a number of elements within sanctuary that are uh deterministic um, like for example, the targeting, uh, some uh, some parts of the pathfinding, the the animation, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but our you know our, our game is definitely not lockstep, and and the, making that like the entire uh, game lockstep deterministic is is an is an insane challenge, right? Some people might be up for it, but um, not our team. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, and, you know, on, on top of that, there's like, you know, water simulation as a whole is, is incredibly ins expensive. And, and while we've made uh, huge advances in that, like I'm, I'm personally a, a subscriber of uh, Two Minute Papers. I don't know if you know that YouTube channel and everything. Um, Rings a bell. Oh, uh, he, he, you know, makes uh, he makes you know uh, videos on all the new uh, uh, science studies on, on computer yeah. um, science that you know where we're gonna try to simulate different things and, and you know it, it can be on uh, on neural nets and reinforcement learning and uh, and water simulations or, or other yeah. uh, soft or rigid body simulations. Um, and, and yeah, he's going to present to you all the advances we, we made in, in that, um, in a nutshell in over the course of, uh, like a 15 minute video or something like that. And, um, uh, and yeah, it's pretty good. But like when, when you see the, the things in the, in those videos, like the, the water simulations and everything like that, it, it, you know, it just turns a, flicks a, a light on in my head. I go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but the, those things like largely uh, aren't uh, aren't real time. We we haven't gotten there yeah. yet. Like we're still trying to to get it as, as close to real time as possible. And you know you've got um, you've got you know advancements in that regard. Like in in the Unreal Engine, you've got um, uh, Niagara, I believe it's called, which is their um, water uh, simulation solution. Um, and uh, yeah, it works pretty exceptionally well. Uh, you know, it, it allows for for fog and mists and clouds and stuff as yeah. well as water, um, and and yeah, but it's it's not, it's still not um, you know a two way interaction, which is when you have like you you, you know you're gonna have your your boat which which floats on it, but the boat also inf influences the the water and then you know in in, in all directions and everything like that. Uh, and then you can have like that as an interactable entity instead yeah. of having just like the character that's an interactable entity and he's influencing the, the water or the water is, is flowing in different places and it's flowing maybe around the character and around the map, but yeah. no, no more is going on than that, right? Um, but, um, but yeah, uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough problem. It's not something that's really necessarily within this um, gaming generation, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe in 10 years or maybe in less than that. Um, but right now it's still, it's still kind of a tough nut to crack. 
Um, and yeah, I wanted to to have like the same thing for for the terrain, like um, explosions and stuff like that, yeah. so really craters and everything. Um, all that is is uh, is really hard to do depending on how involved you want to to get it, you know. Um, so so yeah, uh, that was uh, <laughs> an early idea that I had. As a matter of fact, I had uh, Badump research uh, a voxel engine solution within yeah. Unity. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we made some headway into that, but enough to realize that it just wasn't, you know, wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to happen. Yeah. And so reluctantly, I had to let go of that. And so that's <laughs> one of the many examples. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, um, at the end of the day, like, uh, I'm, I'm somebody who's mostly motivated by wanting to play my own game. And I'm a realist, uh, even though I'm an optimist. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm gonna take the decisions that are gonna favor uh, this game coming out in some form, in some shape, and you know, in probably the the less optimistic or or ambitious states, but at least uh, uh, you know uh, something that's uh, that's a complete game, right? That can, can yeah. bear the name yeah. of the game, right? <laughs> and, yeah. Makes sense. And that that in and in of itself is already a big enough challenge. So maybe I shouldn't, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't renege that. I should accept that for for the the great success that it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and you know, uh, with uh, with modding, with uh, with additional patches and stuff like that, um, perhaps more features can be brought into into Sanctuary at a later date. So I don't need to rush on on all these things. I, I need to, you know, have patience, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's so, you know, you want these things faster. The same as let's be realistic. <laughs> all the gamers are going to want your game faster. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we have to have a bit of patience. Yeah. But I know what you mean. Well, that's that's the thing, right? Like, uh, uh, um, the, there's these are kind of like two opposing levers uh, the the having the game release faster or having a certain feature faster right yeah um, and and so yeah uh, and there's certain like features that I'm not really willing to uh, to renege on like uh, multiplayer you know that that to me is yeah. a, is an absolute must right um, even if like a majority of players don't see it as a must it's one of those things that you can't really add on after the fact. And that would yeah. really break the experience if you tried to add it on as a fact, you know. See Stellaris as a, as a good example of why that can be a very, very bad experience, you know. Or KSP, um, you know, there's plenty of examples of yeah. that. Um, so, so yeah, we, you know, while we know that it's not the core uh, of, a, or the, the sorry, the, the large part of our audience, we, we know that, like, uh, it's something we can't, like, make a cross on. We have to put it in. Uh, otherwise, it's it's just never going to be supported, and that's kind of yeah. a make or break at the end of the day. Um, and you know things like like modding. Well, you could say you know uh, it could be implemented after the fact, but again, it would be very difficult, and it would be very yeah. um, it would probably be very broken in, in certain aspects if it was uh, implemented completely after the fact. Um, so we don't want to do that. We want to have a, a lot more. Uh, we want to give the the modders a lot more freedom in what they can do. And, you know, that really requires con conceiving modding at an engine level. Um, and, you know, so, uh, obviously multi-threading and stuff like that. Yeah. That has to start from, from the very beginning of the project. You can't, you can't, you know, add it in after the fact. I mean, not in no. like the, certainly not in the way that we're doing it, like through dots, right? Um, yeah. Uh, either, either, you know, you, and of course you could do... Uh, hybrid dots, which is where you, you start with Unity game objects and then you add dot, the dots package after the fact and you kind of dotify part of your, your, your code. Um, but, you know, hybrid dots doesn't have anywhere near the same level of performance as pure dots. If you just build, you know, if you just code your projects in dots from the start, um, that's where you can get like really exceptional levels of performance, um, which is what we have. So, so we're really thankful for that, for that choice. Um, so yeah, the, that's you know that's kind of what informs my my decisions and um, and I think that that's uh, you know uh, yes I, I understand that like uh, some of them are, are uh, result in, in a slower uh, time to market for for a game um, 
but you know i i think uh in the long run it's it's going to be well worth it yeah no i agree with that i i think sometimes you just got to be patient and wait for these things to get the end product you want and especially as a gamer if you're rushing the devs and they're putting out something that's not going to be to the quality you expect then you're just going to be disappointed at the end of the day and yeah sometimes we need to learn to have patience yeah one of the things that you don't really have uh, the the option of like taking different avenues for and like with different uh potential results in in the timeline uh is is the art right if you're yeah you know if you set on a different um the quality of art and you want to have it be level with all the different elements of the of the game then there's just a certain time that it takes and that is really fixed um and so you know surprisingly one one of the longest uh things for to to put together for a game uh is is the art uh and you know the 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 artists are are, are hard at work and everything but yeah. um yeah uh the 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 rate at which uh, models and with their with their fully rigged and in fully textures and everything like that the rate at which these come out is fixed and that's not gonna that's not gonna change and so yeah um, we know that we're gonna be able to to hit uh, about you know fifty models per faction uh, at, at, for for you know for an MVP for like a beta or something like that yeah or demo um but um but yeah uh, beyond that we're gonna we're gonna need more time to uh, to put it together right um but we do have like quite you know quite the the artist team right uh three three artists for for all the uh the factions that's pretty good uh yeah. one artist per faction um and uh, and then yeah we have uh, additional uh artists uh, for props and and uh, and things like um the vfx and stuff like that um so so yeah we've got a you know a pretty good rhythm it's not blistering but it's uh, uh it's uh, it's coming along nicely and again it fits within the the time frame of uh, yeah. of releasing a, a completed game one you know 1.0 with with all that we need in terms of like a, like at least 100 units or something like that per faction uh, by 2024 fantastic and then we'll sort of come to the end of the section on development now but i, I know on your website you have development blogs that people can go and read to get more of an insight into all of the aspects yeah yeah absolutely and uh, and i highly recommend those and we we have a, a number of our of the members of our of our team who have uh written up there actually we even have like uh our musician phillips crofts who uh, who's put uh a devlog up we have multiple from the dump that are about uh, pathfinding um and uh and a little bit about optimization um we have uh several from uveso that talks about ai um, which is, uh, you know, quite nice to, to, to have considering that, you know, AI isn't necessarily a, a feature that we're, that we're promising right now. Right. Yeah. Um, we're again, we're planning ahead with this kind of thing, but, um, uh, but yeah, uh, there's, there's, um, uh, honestly, uh, I, I highly recommend, uh, people check those out. They are, um, technical, so, uh, uh, they, they'll appeal to the technical minded or, or to people that are, uh, interested in in getting into uh, into game dev of their of their own, um, you know, but but still, uh, they're they're generally a good read. Yeah, fantastic. Now, you mentioned a couple of times about the community and things like that, and I know you've got a a growing Discord community, which again I'll link down below because I know you're keen to get more people on there, and you've you've got sort of map tools and stuff out there early to get people involved how's that going now are you getting plenty of involvement from the community uh, well it's the it's the you know burgeoning of of all that uh, in, in regards to to the mapping uh, i guess that's the that's the question there um yeah because we uh, uh we do make uh, the uh the mapping tool that we have mm -hmm. available to to the discord members it's uh, in uh, uh the Sanctuary Map Editor channel on the Discord, um, and yeah, it's it's recently um, uh, it's just recently uh, reached uh, version uh, zero uh, zero point thirteen, um, and that that version uh, is much more 
user friendly than the, the previous one, even if it's still not, you know, uh, uh, final or, or anywhere near uh, perfectly user friendly. Like for example, the, the new map button still doesn't do anything. You have to just load in one of the maps that chips with it, and then you can start editing. Uh, you know, you can reset all the all the textures to zero and everything. Yeah. That you can start from scratch. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, it's uh, it comes with a full suite of tools like raising the terrain, uh, painting the, the textures, adding decals, placing props. Uh, you can even paint the props. You can have a paintbrush that you know spreads them out and, and, and puts a lot of them down. Um, you can test units as props. Um, yeah, you can change the the lighting, uh, the, the the sun and the, the direction and the intensity and stuff like that. Um, you you can uh, mess with the roughness. You can you can do a ton of things um, and. Uh, uh, yeah, and and we have like a um, a maps channel on the on the Discord, and mappers can mm -hmm. can post their uh, their results there. Um, uh, so yeah, we we have uh, we have a, a few people uh, already posting what uh, what they've done and everything, but it's people that are more used to to working with. Uh, uh, well, with more complex tools and stuff like that, yeah. and, and who yeah. uh, know how to work their way around something that's kind of half finished. <laughs> and, um, but but you know, it's uh, really like it, I think it's it's, come, it's starting to be the kind of thing that like uh, an every man can try their hand at, um, yeah. and, and you know, and see what what the what they're capable of. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend people give it a try and and, uh, and see what they come up with and, and post it in our channels to to get people's feedback. Fantastic. And speaking of the wider community, sort of thinking about subcom and all of that, obviously Chris Taylor has been somewhat involved in all of this. Now he's, he's, he's giving yeah. you the thumbs up. How did that feel? Yeah, That felt amazing. <laughs> no, uh, I mean like this, uh, this could be summarized to, to a childhood, childhood dream coming true. I mean, like he's, uh, he's my idol. Um, I have, uh, you know, always looked up to to him and his work um i've uh i've been a fan since uh, since as long as i know as i've known about supreme commander um and you know i follow closely uh, everything uh that you know uh, his uh um uh, his career and stuff like that um and i've uh, i've found it always uh, you know, I've always found myself to be, to be in support of uh, of him and and, uh, and what was going on, because um, you know I felt like at, at the end of the day uh, he he was a family man. He was somebody who had um, his morals in the right place, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and yeah, I, I could really sympathize with with all that, um, and yeah, I <laughs> I, I really. Um, yeah, I, re I really was uh, happy to, you know, uh, to be in in this uh, in this position and, and um, be be graced with uh, with his uh, um, with his uh, thumbs up. It was uh, it was really a great moment for me. Um, yeah, uh, we were we were um, you know uh, hoping to to get a word out of him, and uh, it was uh, it was. Uh, uh much greater than, than we could have expected <laughs> yeah I'm, i must admit for, for those who don't know chris taylor is like the grandfather of this type of game to some extent and you know when i when i saw his face pop up on your youtube channel my face lit up because i was just like it's chris taylor how did yeah. they get him <laughs> but yeah no i was i was delighted for you to see him give you the thumbs up as well because as you say you know there's a lot of respect from all of us in the community, mm. I think, towards Chris and the, mm -hmm. you know, what he's achieved in his career so far. So that was, uh, and obviously he's seen things that we haven't seen. So that that gives me uh, pleasing thoughts for the future of what we get to see next. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we we even wanted to, like, uh, if we could try to uh, convince to him to to come on onto the the sanctuary project and everything like that. Um, but that was, you know, never, never really going to happen and not for the, the reasons that people might think it's just, 
you know, he's uh, he's not interested in, in being in in the, the the captain's chair and in managing people and uh, mm. in in running big projects and, and worrying about financials and stuff like that and, and worrying about yeah. sales and, and and all that kind of stuff. Um, like like he said so um, on on every occasion he gets, you know, but on multiple interviews already in, in his blog and stuff like that. Um, he just wants to to you know make his own uh, little uh, personal projects and uh, and you know be kind of stress free, right? Yeah. Um, so so yeah, he's not he's not in the market for the, for that kind of stuff anymore. Um, but you know uh, he he does want to uh, want to lead uh, a cloud company, and he does yeah. offer a, a, apparently a very competitive and, and good cloud service. Uh, and uh, and he's also you know making his uh, personal uh, hobby video game, um, so you know uh, things to 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 keep an eye out for I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's not he's not really interested in, in being in, in this kind of space though. He is interested in in like um, um, giving us uh, uh, you know the thumbs up and and and. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, bringing the 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 community to uh, to our aid. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Mm. So, obviously, we've talked about a lot today, and I don't want to take up all of your time. Is there any other messages you'd like to get across? I know that obviously you're thinking about the Kickstarter next year and things like that. Is there any of that you'd like to talk about? Um, yeah, I, I would like, uh, well, obviously I want, I want everyone to, you know, stay alert about that. We, we do have the Kickstarter page up. It's been up for a while. And, uh, the best thing you can possibly do for us is to go on to Kickstarter, sign up there if you don't have an account already and, uh, ask to be notified by, by Kickstarter of when the, the Kickstarter for, uh, for Sanctuary Shattered Sun goes live. Um, and, uh, and yeah, um, the, the second best thing you could do is uh, is uh, sign up for for our, our newsletter on the on the sanctuary websites. Uh, we haven't sent out a single mail yet, but we will when things like you know the Kickstarter goes live and when we have a, a beta to to try. Um, so we'll you know we'll mail people about that then. Um, and then you know third best thing is to join the Discord. Uh, and, um, yeah, so what, what thoughts specifically about the, the Kickstarter? Well, um, I, I know that, you know, now that, you, so just to be clear, we have pushed it back two times already. Um, and it's different, you know, uh, pitching a, a Kickstarter when you have just the, the burgeoning, uh, start of a, of a game and when you have, uh, uh, a playable demo and, and, uh, and much more content, right? Um, and that's that's obviously why we've we pushed it back. We've uh, we've waited to have the the financing to be able to do that, and we we have that now. Um, and uh, and so yeah, we don't have the the exact date, though I'll, I know it's going to be early in in 2023. Um, and uh, and at that point, yeah, we want we want everybody to to come in at once. Definitely not miss it. Because there, there's only one real shot at this. We don't get to do, you know, multiple campaigns. We only did get to do the one. So we don't want anyone to, to miss it. And we want really our, our voices to be heard loud and clear because this, this not, you know, not only um, does it, you know, uh, give us the, the, the funding to make this project much, much bigger uh, than it would otherwise be, but also it sends a message to the world about how, uh, how much the market is in demand for this. And that'll bring a lot of you know extra eyes to to us, which in turn will make the project even better. So yeah, uh, Kickstarter is really one of the big metrics out there, uh, apart for wish lists and stuff like that on Steam. That you know um, that allows for for potentially um, news journalists outlets to to pay attention to us mm -hmm. and, and things like that, right? Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that's that's what I have to say about Kickstarter. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, Tatsu, for joining me today and talking us through all of this stuff. It's really nice to get sort of an insight into the actual development of the game and not just sort of ask you about the features because we sort of know those from your website and the lists you've provided. So it's nice to sort of get into the nitty gritty in the background and stuff. So thank you very much for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the interview. Very, very not, interesting. Not at all. <laughs> And 
yeah, I think that I want to kind of go against the flow here because I want to send the signal that um, no, we're not the, the the guys in the suits, and we're not doing this this uh, we're we're not you know uh, trying to 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 screw the consumer over and everything like that. We're we're a bunch of fans making a game, yeah, and uh, and we you know we serve the fans here. And so I think that in the way that we express ourselves, it's important to make that distinction. So, and so, yeah, I'm definitely down for, for different interview formats. Definitely. Well, you certainly come across that way. So you should be pleased. I hope Tattoo doesn't mind me just including that little bit of extra conversation we had there. I didn't even realize I was still recording at the time, but I found it at the end of my video. I must not have hit the stop recording button. But I just felt that it really shows how passionate these guys are about this project and how they want to come across. And I really appreciate that and I wanted to share it with all of you. Now, I want to say thank you very much for watching. Tatsu, again, thank you so much for joining me for what has been a very long video and taking up a lot of your day. So I really appreciate it. And I hope you've all enjoyed getting a different style of interview here where we not just hear about the game but also the development of a game and the passion that these guys have for this project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.